So hello, everybody. My name is Colin Scott. I am the Assistant Director for Transfer Admissions here at Western. We are hosting a series of events this week and next month um, to, to really provide you the opportunity to talk to our colleges, um, the seven colleges that we have here at Western, um, talk to our outreach managers, as well as anybody um, coordinating the um, counseling um, for our students and your students here at Western. And we thought this would be very helpful for you to hear from our teams, uh, understand some of the changes that they may have uh, or may be currently undergoing if that's education. I know we have a lot that we're currently working on with a lot of state changes, but this is an opportunity for you to ask some questions. You're gonna hear from um, Derek and the team. They're gonna go through and update you on some of the things that they're working on. And then after that, we're really gonna open this up for Q&A and allow you to kind of uh, make sure you have everything you need to be helpful for your students. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Derek to maybe kick this off and um, maybe introduce his team. That probably would make most sense, too. Um, I think we have Val's with us and Derek, but um, again, I introduce myself. Um, maybe Derek, you can go introduce yourself and Val, say something. Awesome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Derek Andre, and I am the assistant, or sorry, acting director of advising for the College of Education and Human Development. Um, and uh, this is, here is a picture of our team, and then um, I will let um, Val introduce herself, and I think Shannon is coming, but we'll see. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Today, my name is Val Horwath. I'm the manager of recruitment and outreach here for the College of Education and Human Development. Um, Derek and I are super excited to be here to talk with you all about basically what we're gonna cover are just a, an overview, a refresher of the different programs and majors that we have in the college, highlighting some of the different changes to our academic programs that have happened this year, some things that are coming down the pipeline, and also talk about some of our different opportunities for your students to engage with us, um, even virtually from a distance, as well as just some general talk about um, articulation, transfer agreements, um, things that may need updating, what that process looks like. So like Derek said, we should be having um, Shannon Myers join us. She's one of our senior academic advisors in the college. Um, she's kind of one of our transfer articulation specialists. Um, so hopefully she'll be able to log on. Um, this, this session is being recorded, but please at any time, feel free to write down any information that is on the slides, take a screenshot of the slides, whatever works best for you. We'll have some different website links, contact information on some of our different slides, but we're also more than happy to send out a copy of this after to all of you as well. Um, but yeah, just to highlight our advising office contact information at the bottom here, cehd-advising at wmich.edu. That's a great way for you and your students alike to get connected to their academic advisor um, for any questions. And then also virtual or in-person or phone appointments can be scheduled at wmich.edu slash education slash advising. It's also where we have all of our information on all the majors, um, program guides, transfer guides, things like that as well. So those are both good electronic resources. So just a brief history about the College of Education and Human Development at Western. Some of you may or may not know if you have talked with us before, Western was actually founded as a teacher's college back in 1903. So as you can imagine, being the College of Education and Human Development, we are super proud of our history with the university being the actual programs that caused Western Michigan to come to exist in the first place. Obviously, both our college and campus have grown a lot since then. Um, but especially if you have students in the teacher education disciplines or who want those careers, Western is a top choice. We have over 115 years of experience training future educators and other professionals. Now we have our whole human development side of the college. We'll get in in just a minute to what exactly that means. Um, and, but that is our, our foundation and our history. So that is something that we love sharing. We're very proud of it and something that you can share with your students as well. Fast forward to today though, we are very lucky to not be still in the same facilities that we had back in 1903. Um, you just saw in the previous slide, a picture of Sangren Hall, which if you have been to campus at all in the last 10 years, I'm sure you have seen it. It is our largest and newest academic building on campus located right in the heart of, um, of our campus environment. So it's a really great place for our students to be spending a lot of their time. 
It is home to all of our main offices and service areas within the college. So our advising office, student success, clinical experiences, teacher certification, our dean's office, as well as four of our six departments and the majority of our teacher education programs. We do have some um, photos, videos of our specialty classrooms and labs in the building um, that at wmich.edu slash education slash tours. This is something that you're welcome to take a look at. You can share this with your students as well if they're not able to make the trip to campus to view some of our spaces. So something that we really value in our college is hands-on learning. Um, we do that through internships and field experiences, which we'll talk about, but also through in-class hands-on educational experiences. So in Sangren Hall, we have four specialty education classrooms, an early childhood classroom, science education, social studies, and creative arts, as well as a reading center and clinic in the building that has a children's library, small group workrooms, and some instructional observation rooms also. Um, in Corman Hall, this is home to our family and consumer sciences majors. We have two fashion design apparel um, sewing labs. We have a design gallery space that students are able to um, modify to, to their needs. We have an interior design resource room, four interior design studios, one for each year of the program, as well as a food service kitchen for our dietetics majors. And then in the Student Recreation Center, um, which is home to our Human Performance and Health Education Department and majors, we have a athletic training lab, a biomechanics lab, and an exercise physiology lab. And those students are also able to use the different um, courts and equipment in our Student Recreation Center. For example, our physical and health education majors are able to use the facilities in that building as part of their classroom learning as well. So I'm going to briefly summarize the different academic majors that we offer, and then I'm going to turn it over to Derek to talk about some of the, ch the changes with these programs and how that might affect advising or your transfer students. So this is a list of all the teacher education majors offered at Western. Western does offer art and music education. These are primarily run out of the College of Fine Arts. So your student will be transferring into that college just due to the specific nature of those programs. But our college works with those majors for their internship placement and their upper level education classes. Then we have our, our workforce education and development cluster of majors. This includes business education, family and consumer sciences education, and industrial technology education. Uh, these are really great opportunities for students who might have an interest in teaching, but maybe they're not super jazzed about like the traditional subjects, math, language arts, social studies, science. So these give them the opportunity to get certified to teach courses that are typically found as electives at the, the middle school or high school level. We do offer early childhood elementary education um, for your students with, you know, community college catalog entry terms prior to this year. They'll be eligible for, for the existing program model, which certifies um, birth through essentially fifth grade, all subjects, um, and that is going to be changing. We'll talk about changes in just a couple of slides for students who are going to be starting with you um, this year moving forward and transferring to Western. Our elementary education program, um, same kind of setup, our, our previous model, which certified um, K-5 all subjects, K-8 in a self-contained classroom, now is shifting to be preschool through sixth grade. So I'm sure you're all familiar, the state of Michigan is changing all the education grade bands. So every institution in Michigan is updating their programs to meet those. Um, so, so again, we're, we're looking forward to working very individually with your students in the next few years as we transition to figure out exactly which program model they should be in as we teach out our old programs and shift to the new ones. So we're always going to be working with an eye toward what is most advantageous for your student and their time to degree. Um, let's see, next we... Um, we also have physical and health education. This is a combined degree program, which is unique um, to Western compared to how some other schools run it. So they get one degree and they get equally certified in physical education K-12 and health education K-12. Western's program was actually a pilot through the Michigan Department of Education and they liked our program model so much that um, they're gonna be having the other schools in Michigan shift to a similar model. So Western is definitely leading the way in, in that discipline. Secondary education, I'm going to talk about on the next slide, because that is the only program that we have that is not a bachelor's degree model. 
Special education, um, not a huge shift in this compared to the previous program model. So we still certify K-12 special education um, for learning disabilities, as well as regular elementary education, all subjects. That's going to be preschool through third grade. Um, we do have an option, an accelerated master's degree now in special education that will allow students to add on, if they choose, a K-12 um, learning or emotional impairments endorsement. And then a new program that is starting this fall is teaching English to speakers of other languages. So this will certify K-12 in that ESL endorsement, as well as elementary PK through three, all subjects. Like I mentioned, secondary runs differently than all of the, the previous programs that we just mentioned. So for these traditional subject areas, math, language, arts, social studies, science, and foreign languages that are on the screen, our secondary education program has transitioned to a master's degree pathway. And so what this means is that um, it runs the undergrad program. Your students will actually be majoring in the majors on the slide in their subject area that they want to teach. Um, again, you know, we'll work with students individually based on their, their catalog year, but most of our incoming students are gonna be shifting to this model. And so, for example, if they want to teach high school English, They'll be an English major through our College of Arts and Sciences, get their bachelor's degree, become that subject area expert. While they're doing that, we have a pre-secondary education pathway, which is a series of undergraduate education courses that get them introduced to the profession, as well as experience out on some clinical rotations, working with students and teachers in local schools. So they do get that experience in their undergrad degree. Then they start our one-year master's in secondary ed. So it's about a 13 or 14 month program. It runs summer to summer. So a full academic cycle. We kind of front load their pedagogy and methods courses and they also get a full academic year of student teaching in local schools. This is the most classroom management experience offered by any secondary ed program in Michigan. So our students are going to leave highly, highly prepared and sought after as educators. They get to see the setup of the classroom in August and how teachers build their rapport throughout the fall, as well as finishing out the school year um, through June. So that is the model for secondary ed. Again, just for these traditional subject areas, secondary level certifications like um, business education, that's still that bachelor's degree model, everything that was on that previous slide. And as always, if any students have any questions, please feel free to connect them with us. Um, and we're happy to talk about their individual situation. Then a brief rundown of our human development majors. So these are programs that do not lead to teacher certification, but all focus somehow on improving the human condition. So we have our cluster of what we call family science majors. This includes child and family development, family studies, and youth and community development. These programs are great opportunities for students who might have an interest in working with young children, youth, adolescents, and their families, but aren't interested in that classroom teaching environment. And so with that, um, they're able to be prepared for a wide variety of careers, anything ranging from child psychology. Um, I'm sorry if you are seeing my notifications pop up. I thought I muted those, but apparently it did not work. Um, so with that, yeah, child psychology, social work, child life specialist, which is a family liaison in a medical setting, daycare management and operations. It could also be family educators, after school programs, community organizations, a, a wide range of job opportunities. Then on the health and wellness side of our college, we have our exercise science and our nutrition and dietetics majors, nutrition and dietetics prepares students to become a registered dietitian. That is a national certification process. So we prepare them for that, all those requirements, um, and prepare them for the graduate level internship process with that. Exercise science is a really broad-based health and wellness program. It gets students all of their foundational science requirements, your anatomy, biology, um, chemistry, physiology, and then there are nine different elective tracks within exercise science that students can choose from to specialize the degree for their specific area of interest. So if students are interested in pursuing additional um, professional health degrees, they can specialize in uh, pre-athletic training, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy, pre-med, pre-PA, chiropractic. But then we also have some that don't require that advanced degree. So if, if they want to specialize in personal fitness, um, exercise physiology, cardiac rehabilitation, things like that. 
Then we have kind of the creative side of our college. You can see we have a lot of very different major opportunities within our, our area. We do have our fashion program. There's two, two sides of that program. Um, students get courses in both areas, but then they'll specialize into either design and development. So really that highly creative side, um, conceptualizing, sketching, creating individual garments or product lines, and then the merchandising side, which is the business side of the fashion world. So careers like product promotion, retail buying, advertising, events, um, storefront management. So that really functions as a specialized business degree. Our interior design program is um, proposed to move to the College of Fine Arts starting fall of 2022. So if you do have students joining that program, um, they will be switching over to fine arts, most likely, again, still in the approval process, um, starting next fall. Interior design really, though, is it's a highly sequenced program. It's a four year program from their first semester at Western. So with interior design, um, unfortunately, it is it is our least transfer friendly major. So it's very important for those students, honestly, just to get to Western, because even if they you know, take some gen eds, they still have four years of interior design coursework that's sequenced, then they're going to run into issues of they still have four years of coursework, but they won't be able to meet a full credit load each semester, things like that. So interior design is kind of a special case. Um, but if you have students that are interested in that program, again, you'll be able to direct them to Western's College of Fine Arts starting next year. Then we have recreation and sport management. Similar to fashion merchandising, these also function as specialized business degrees in a sense. So they focus on the business administration side of the leisure and sport worlds, whether that is some of the traditional things you might think of, parks and recreation, um, that could all, summer camps, it could also be things like managing amusement parks, um, casinos, cruise lines, anything that is leisure time activities. On the sport management side, that could be any level students are interested in, whether that is local recreational, high school collegiate, even professional, managing teams and players or facilities, advertising and ticket sales, sponsorships, sport media, sport law, sport statistics. There's a lot of different opportunities in these fields. And then the last one is workforce education and development. This is a, again, non-teaching major that focuses on career development, career preparation type careers that you might find in a post-secondary setting like a community college or even some type of corporate training roles. And if anybody does have any questions, um, generally speaking about the majors, again, we're going to talk about some changes on the next slide, but feel free to drop those in the chat um, and, and we can answer those before we move on if anybody just has any questions about the programs. I did also want to briefly highlight our accelerated graduate degrees. Obviously, this is nothing that, you know, you all um, are, are dealing with as far as transfer credit, but it's good for students to know about these opportunities as they're maybe considering a transfer institution. So all of our students in our family science majors are eligible for our accelerated master's degrees in child life, family life education, or youth and community development. Any of our undergraduate um, education majors are eligible for our accelerated master's in TESOL, teaching English to speakers of other languages. We touched a little bit on the, the special education, that emotional impairments endorsement. And then any of our workforce education and development teaching majors are eligible for an accelerated master's degree in that area as well. Okay, and seeing no immediate questions in the chat, I am going to turn it over to Derek, to Derek and Shannon. I think Shannon um, logged in and joined us. Welcome, Shannon. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to our advising team to talk about the different program changes for CEHD. All right, awesome. So I'm going to start by just going a little more into detail about um, some of the, the programs that we mentioned earlier um, and ones that programs that we have that specifically have changes um, that um, have come about recently that may um, affect you all. Um, as we mentioned, right, the interior design program um, is moving to the College of Fine Arts, most likely starting fall of 2022. So we just wanted to briefly mention that, but most of the changes that we um, have recently had um, or have coming are revolve around our teacher education programs again because of the changes that have come to the grade bands through um, the state of Michigan that's impacted how we um, shifted and um, made changes to our program. 
Um, the, the, we have really qu quite a few options here that really all um, center around elementary education. Um, so we'll kind of touch on, I'll kind of touch on those as a group and then um, work back to secondary education in a minute. Um, so the first program is elementary education um, that certifies students to teach both the pre-K to three and three through third through sixth grade band in all subjects. So math, science, social studies, language arts, and um, any other content that's taught at the elementary level, which sometimes can include some fine arts and health and physical education. Um, uh, our program is now a four-year program, so it is shorter um, than it used to be, which is one of the things that's come out of the grade bands that we're really excited about. Um, we've never loved having to have five-year programs, um, but we had to meet State of Michigan certification requirements. Um, so we've been kind of stuck based on what they've allowed us to do. Um, and thankfully, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to the articulations um, section as well, but thankfully they've allowed us to combine a lot of our classes. So instead of having you know, a one biology class, one chemistry class, um, one physics class where we're being allowed to combine and make a, phys a physical science class and a life science class to cut some of the content classes out and really just combine and pare down to a shorter program. Um, so that's been really nice um, on our end. Um, the other um, option that we have that also um, fo um, not focuses on but um, is tied to elementary education is our special education program. Um, so that certifies students with the PK-3 grade band only. Um, so that's how it ties to elementary education. Um, and then it also adds K through 12 um, grades with um, certification in learning disabilities. And then also gives the option to do K-12 emotional impairments in an accelerated master's program. Um, and the nice thing is if students choose to do that accelerated master's program to add on the emotional impairment certification, um, they can do that in the five years that they would have done our old program, um, and they'll also get their master's degree um, because they'll start on their master's degree in their fourth, their senior year of classes, and then they finish that up in a fifth year. Um, so they're able to stay the same amount of time that they um, would have been at Western in the old program, but they can get um, an extra certification to add to their um initial teaching certification in the PK-3 and K-12. Um, so we're also really excited about that opportunity for students, but also gives them the opportunity to be done in four years and do um, just one endorsement if that's what they would prefer to do. Um, a new program that we have is our what we call our TESOL program or Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Um, this is also a, like the special education tied to a PK-3 all subjects endorsement. Um, and then it certifies kindergarten through 12th grade um, for English as a second language, um, which again, we're also really excited about because we've had this in the past only available to students at the graduate level. Um, so we're really excited to be able to bring this to students at the undergraduate level because we do have a lot of interest of folks who want to work um, with speakers of other languages. Um, and this allows them to be able to do that and still get um, a tie to an elementary endorsement as well. Um, and then the last program change that we have is a change that is proposed for fall of 2022. Um, so this is this is the only one that is not already active and started at Western. Um, we were waiting for some final approvals through the state of Michigan. Um, they've just made a couple changes um, and we re revised the new program that we just submitted. Um, so we're just working on tweaking a couple things. And um, again, this should be um, set to go for fall 2022. Um, but obviously, if it is not, we will make sure to let you all know. Um, but with that program, we'll have really two options. One is an option that is just birth through kindergarten, um, which is our, it's called our early learning and interventions major. Um, so it's going to be really nice for folks who um, really want to work with just the young kids want to work kindergarten and below um, and actually have teacher certification at that level. It's also 
um, are proposed to be our shortest major. Um, that's only going to be around 60 credits, so it'll be really easy to tack on to um, a degree from you know transfer degree from a community college um, without adding any time on to their program of study, even if they came in with, you know, they came in to us from a community college and came in thinking they wanted to go into business, did two years with you all and then come to us, they could still get this program done very quickly, which is really cool. Um, they don't have to come into you all in their first semester saying, I wanna go into teaching at Western, which we know they don't all always do. Um, and then the other option that we've proposed is our, it combines our birth through kindergarten with the pre-K through third, all subjects, um, which is our early childhood unified education. So that kind of combines the elementary, but um, also instead of giving them the three, six um, with a little bit older kids, it gives the birth through kindergarten um, as the, the focus. And that's also um, a four-year program. So that's um, another thing we're really excited about. Um, and then we talked a little bit about secondary education. Um, and, and I think really just, um, so we mentioned, right, that says covers seventh through 12th grade, um, in those content areas that we showed you earlier with the one year master's degree program. And the thing that we, um, I think I just want to highlight here and mention um, is that the nice thing about this program is because you can go get a degree in English and then apply for our master's program is that took all of the required secondary education courses out of the undergraduate level. Um, so students are doing the same five years with total that they were doing to get um, secondary education with our old program, but instead of coming out with one degree, they're coming out with two because they're doing the four years to get their undergraduate degree in the content area, plus the one year's master's, where in the old program, it was a five-year program between their required content area and the education courses and the intern teaching at the undergraduate level. Since the um, education portion has all been moved to the master's level, it gets them their bachelor's degree sooner. So if they decide that education is not the route for them, they uh, didn't sink as much time into their bachelor's degree. And then if they still want to do secondary education, they can get through with that um, in a very quick fashion. Um, and one thing, other thing that we really love about the, the way our new master's program is set up is the students are gonna, will be doing a year in the same classroom. Um, so they start in the fall part-time in a classroom and they go through and then start in January and do January to June full-time in the classroom. Um, so they are getting to see what it's like to be a teacher in a classroom for a full year, not just um, getting a couple months here and there. Um, so that's another thing we're really excited about with that program. Um, and then just one other thing I wanted to mention here is just kind of a heads up is that there likely will be changes coming for fall 2022. We've proposed them. They have been, been nothing's been officially approved yet, but we likely will have changes coming to our exercise science program. We're kind of working to overhaul that. Um, so that's something to kind of look for uh, that we'll have more information coming out about moving forward. Um, and we, again, we'll work with you all um, with regard to those changes, um, assuming that they do come about. Okay, and I think, um, so I will, do this slide also. So just a little bit of information about our student success services um, in our college. Um, so we have a student success team for all of our students in the College of Education and Human Development. So we have academic advising. Um, we are available to students for drop-in advising. We have phone advising, video, and in-person. Um, so we have whatever works best for students um, we can do. Um, we really love having the video and phone appointments because, you know, if we have folks who are, you know, living in other parts of the state and want to still meet with us um, to discuss their transfer to Western, we can help them with that. Um, as I'm sure most of you are probably aware of, we do have on our website transfer guides for all of our majors to show what classes from each community college in the state of Michigan um, that students can take um, and how those courses will transfer over into their majors. Um, so we always have those available. Um, so that way you can see those. We don't have those updated for our new elementary programs yet. That's coming. Um, but for the rest of our programs, you can see um, the courses and see what that looks like. Um, also, we have a student success 
staff um, and student success team, and we work with our students um, to have success appointments available. So that's really looking at we understand that academics is just a small part of students' journey, especially when they're at a four-year institution where they're living with us um, and are here all the time. Um, so we help them with anything that is outside of their academic life. Um, so campus resources, how to get involved on campus, we help with financial aid. Um, I was really just want to point out that basically we're here to um, assist students in the, their success um, with our student success staff. Um, also, we want to mention our TRIO Future Educator Success Program. Um, so with that program that's um, for our students going into teaching majors, um, students can qualify for those at the program um, as transfer students, and that is um, for students, they have to qualify either being a first generation student, um, be income eligible, or have a diagnosed disability. Um, but if they meet one of those three components, they can work with our TRIO program and they get a, uh, a much um, more intensive it's a program that has much more intensive, um, much closer um, tie to advisors that also help as their success staff and kind of as their go, they have their go to person that um, helps them all the way through. Um, and we are happy to have students apply to that program. Mm -hmm. um, and then also quickly about um, just a few things about engagement. Um, our programs all require 100% of our programs require an internship or field experience for our students. Um, so every single one of our students in our both our education and our human development programs um, completes the courses that they um, need in internships or field experience. So that way they have practical experience to put on their resumes. Um, also, we have an education career fair that we host every year specifically for our teaching students to um, bring jobs and employers to campus to meet students so they can talk to them, they can practice interview. We have a lot of students that get hired through the education fair or um, who get job interviews set up through that fair. And we have um, employers come from all around the country to participate in that. Um, and then the 92% post active graduate engagement, what that is, is that we have had, um, and this was in the last year, so during the pandemic, um, we have had 92% of students within three months of graduation um, who are in jobs, full-time employed that they are happy with or have started a graduate program and or have um, started act active military service. Um, so even during a pandemic when jobs have been harder to come by, a, very, a vast majority of our students coming through our programs in the College of Education and Human Development at Western um, have gotten jobs and they are happy in their jobs. Thanks for sharing all of that, um, yep. Derek. And does anybody before we move on have any questions about any of those program changes that we highlighted? Val, I'd just like to add um, regarding the access to the advisors. Uh, if you go to the ed page, there is a big red button that allows a transfer student to immediately go and set up an appointment to talk to the advisors. I always highlight this because we all have those students who are definitely a little bit more engaged um, with our advising staff or with you as well. And so sometimes it's, it's nice to know that if they're coming to you with lots of questions and you feel that they would be better suited just maybe speaking to one of our advisors to get those like, well, how do I do this? How does financial aid work? Like our team is definitely willing to do that. They can schedule that appointment right on the education site with um, on that page. It's a big red button. They cannot miss it. Um, mm -hmm. It's for them. It's for those students in particular, those students that just need that, you know, that, that extra guidance and just reassurance that things are going right, that they're doing the right thing and it'll all work out. So I always love to stress that our, our, our staff is always available for everybody. I, I think that's a, a key thing. Derek had mentioned it briefly. So I wanted to really highlight that we make sure it's obvious to see. We cannot miss that. Yeah, absolutely. And um, our, our team of advisors are fantastic. I'm not just saying that because a couple of them are here watching me. Um, they are, are super excited to meet with students before they even ever apply to Western. If you know, they want to help have help mapping out their transfer courses and what their 
path to degree will look like here at Western. We even have students that will email them um, their schedule for the up upcoming semester just to double check it and make sure they don't need to make any changes or they can you know, make some quick suggestions if there are changes that um, need to be made. So students do not have to wait to be admitted to Western to come engage with our academic advisors. In fact, for transfer students, it's recommended <laughs> to not wait until you're admitted to the university, um, especially if you're going into education or one of our um, programs that have a, a, a little bit more of specific requirements. So students can reach out to us at any time. And then we also just wanted to highlight some of our different engagement opportunities for students to connect with us. Um, you know, like Derek said, we're available for in-person appointments. We have in-person campus tours and events going, but we know that sometimes, especially for our students that might live across the state or outside of the Kalamazoo area, that that's not always the most convenient, especially for our students that might have, you know, they're an active student, they might have work obligations class, things like that. Um, so we encourage students to connect with us on social media. We are at WMUCEHD on all platforms. We share a lot of important information, dates and deadlines for our scholarships, for our applications, what our student organizations are doing, what life is like in the college. So it's a good way for them to get a snapshot of life as a CEHD student. We also, like Derek said, offer video and phone advising for students that cannot come to campus. They can select that when they schedule their appointment. Uh, we also have weekly virtual info sessions that students can sign up for if they want to learn about the college a little bit more generally. Those are not transfer advising sessions, more just of the general information if they're getting started with us. We have virtual tours available both through our college as well as through our general admissions office if they want to get a feel for campus before they are able to come here. And like Derek mentioned, we have those transfer guides, online transfer resources, the admissions office has a great transfer landing page also for students. So there's a lot of information that they can explore online as well. Okay, and then we also just wanted to have a, a general surface level discussion about the articulation process in general, as well as some, some things to consider since we have a lot of program changes. So if your institution does have existing articulations with um, Western's College of Education and Human Development, those probably need to be deleted or updated or something like that. Um, and, and we'd love to have your faculty talk with our faculty about getting some of those new course equivalencies and things like that up for our new programs. So I'm going to turn it over to Colin to talk a little bit um, generally about the articulation process and what that looks like. Thanks, Al. Yes, with all the changes, definitely to Ed, we have to update a lot of these agreements. Uh, it, we have found that the best practice is you can reach out to myself to, uh, to find out who your contact point would be. Shannon coordinates uh, the uh, articulation agreements for the College of Ed, so she's more than happy to put that through. Generally, what we want to do is really have your advising team or your, your person who's going to be leading those changes within those courses to talk to our staff. So um, speaking with, with Chan and making sure our faculty can talk to your faculty and getting that conversation started to get those course equivalencies worked on, that is the biggest priority at this moment. Uh, it's we Everybody knows that these changes kind of came fairly abruptly to us. And I did mention this to the MTA team or the Michigan uh, transfer team um, when we had that, that uh, spring meeting that this really should have been better coordinated from the state within the state. Um, it would have been nice to have everybody together to coordinate, hey, how are we? we're not doing one for ones, but unfortunately that's kind of where we are at. So if um, really in a sense, we're just advising that if you can provide us the faculty contact information that you believe we need to be getting in touch with for those courses, that would be greatly helpful for us. Uh, that way our faculty can reach out to your faculty and start those conversations. We have a, a number of those conversations. I have quite a full calendar as I'm tracking all these, uh, but that is definitely the best way to get this started and make sure that process is going. If you do see an articulation agreement uh, or a program agreement as we often call it, that is outdated or over five years, or you definitely know needs some changes and updates, of course, reach out to me. Let's get that conversation going and make sure we're updating that as well. Those are the big things for us. Um, and the next thing that I always wanna stress is we are always willing and ready to jump on the next agreement. We have a ton of engagement here. I think we've all kind of come out of our COVID um, chaos, uh, not that it's gone away fully, but we are at least at a point now, I think we're back 
And I've noticed this with, with the institutions that we're working with, that everyone's kind of getting back up onto that aspect. So if you have an agreement you'd love to launch or get kicked off, or you found out we have a program here that you're interested in, let us know. Uh, I try to stress that we do our best to work with what you currently have to see if it can sink into what we are offering here. Uh, you'd be surprised at what agreements can easily be worked in to make sure the students have this, this pathway to follow. So definitely uh, get in touch with us if you have an agreement you wanna get kicked off. We would love to start some new. Um, and one thing I always love to note to everybody is Western's uh, premise that the MTA is out now is that is the first thing we try to work out in any agreement that we're moving forward is that an MTA is being followed by students. It alleviates a lot of the stress that we have to worry about with our new gen ed requirements. You've heard about WES, um, Western Essential Studies. That, that aspect um, has definitely changed for us. So if a student can complete the MTA, and have that certified on their transcript. They do not have to worry about levels one and two here at Western. That's only level three that's a requirement. And those are only two courses that our juniors and seniors all have to take as well. So they, your transfer students will sink perfectly right in as if they had you know, come in smoothly from the beginning. So that makes it a lot easier. So I stress that, that if, uh, if you have any questions regarding Wes and how to make it, that work with some of these agreements or just uh, transfer guides, if a student does complete WES and has that certified, they do not have to worry about levels one and two and it makes it a lot easier for our advising team. So I know Derek and his team probably will appreciate that I'm putting that plug in. So that's a big thing. If there are any questions and I will kind of monitor the chat regarding um, articulations, definitely let me know. If you have any questions, I am the point person for just coordinating these activities. Definitely I'll make sure you're in touch with the right people. Thanks, Colin. And yeah, just to, to re-emphasize also, especially if you have any um, existing education program, program agreements or articulation agreements, or if you have students that um, are working through those or, or think they're working through those, please get in touch with us on those, especially what we what we would hate to have happen is have students, you know, think they're moving through a process and then get here and, it, you know, it's a program structure that's not um, available anymore or something like that. So we are trying, uh, you know, as, as we see these things to kind of go and get those updated or get those, you know, removed so we can create new ones for the new programs, but um, just something to keep an eye out for on your end as well. And like we've said multiple times, we're always willing to work with um, students individually, especially on the education side of things where um, it can be a little bit more particular than, than some other majors. And then the last thing that we want to share is our virtual resources page. I will paste this um, into the chat right now as well. This is a really great page to bookmark or to share with your students. We share it with our students all the time. It is kind of our, our digital replacement for an info folder that we'd be giving you all um, if with this were able to be an in-person session. So that page has not only links back to general admissions information, so application, campus tours, virtual tours, next steps, checklists, financial aid, but also for a lot of information in our college, much more than we had time to talk about today. So for every single major that we talked about earlier, we have a link to that program website so students can learn more or connect with faculty. Or if you have your faculty that you know like wanna connect with our programs, they can get our faculty contact information that way as well, especially to work out some of those um, course equivalencies and things like that. We also have a link to download a flyer for each individual program that has, again, way more details than I had time to, to share in each little snippet today. We also have a link to the advising page for each major so that students can see exactly what courses go into, um, into those programs here at Western and links to schedule with their advisor, um, links to our scholarship applications, some different welcome videos as well if, if students wanna hear from people other than myself. Um, they have, we have a welcome from our Dean, um, one of our additional academic advising team members, a student success coach, as well as some current students. So um, again, feel free to use that as a resource. We update that throughout the year. Um, if you or your students have general questions on the recruitment side of things, uh, we shared our advising office email address earlier in the session. My recruitment email address is cehd-outreach at wmich.edu. So any questions students have on the Kind of academic side of things, not necessarily advising, but 
what the program experience will be like, internships, um, different things like that. I'm happy to connect with them as well, or if they ever want to arrange a visit, um, I would be their point of contact for that also. And I think um, unless Derek or Shannon, you have anything else to share, I think that's everything that we wanted to be sure to share with you all, Colin, feel free to add anything else as well. But if anybody does have any questions, we're certainly willing to hang out here for a few minutes um, and talk about anything that you might be wondering about. But if not, thank you so much for joining us. We're super excited to continue to work with you. Thank you all for being fantastic partners for the university as a whole, for the College of Education and Human Development. Um, we hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season and winter break and go Broncos. <laughs> Thanks, Val. No, I, th I think we're all good. I, again, we're always open to new ideas. If you have any suggestions for us or things that you think can improve, definitely let us know. Um, for all of you joining us, we do have transfer pages designed for each of your, um, your institutions. So uh, when they go to the transfer site, they can always find their institution and just find some of the particular sessions we're doing for you um, in particular. Uh, then again, all the transfer guides are there and then the links to, of course, our college sites that they can go and see directly at that end. So, but if you have anything that you think would be beneficial to your students, please get a hold of us, let us know. We, uh, we're always striving to, to make our site a little bit more user-friendly. Uh, again, when you realize you have over 200 admission pages, it can be a bit challenging to keep everything up to date and uh, as optimal as possible. So any advice, um, we're always open for. So again, Always here to help. And I saw we had one question. I'm um, just going to go take a quick look. Yes, we will be posting that out, um, the link. And then, of course, if there's any materials regarding today that you need, just let us know. I think we'll, we'll try to provide that as well. Yeah, Colin, I can get you all um, the, the presentation, too, that we shared that you can, if you want to send that at the same time that you send the recording so that people can have that, too. We'll Excellent. That. That'd be really helpful. Yeah, there's a great, yeah. a lot of helpful materials in there. And I know even just knowing which majors we offer by college can itself be a challenge. So, uh, yeah, we'll definitely post that because I know your students might be interested in seeing what else we have to offer outside of the uh, the, the most known majors. Um, 150 majors is a lot for a student to realize that, you know, there's a lot of options for them. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time.